Hello, everybody. We're back again today. Normally, of course, we'd be doing Sports Beat, our regular gig on Thursdays with my partners, Glenn Calloway from the basement and Randall Nelson. But baseball's sort of in a dull, nothing's happening kind of mode right now. So we decided to shift gears. And we have a special guest, Mr. Larry Graves, a.k.a. Canadian Stud Muffin. Thrilled he's here with us. Glad he came, was willing to come on and... Uh, talk music with us today we're doing Elton i'm just Khan. disappointed we're not talking about sports i know you are well <laughs> another time my friend <laughs> anyway the topic today is elton john we're going to do his top 15 songs uh we we like to go for these big artists we did neil young a ways back and today it's elton john's turn and we're going to uh reminisce and talk about his top 15 songs uh, thank you very much, Larry, for joining us. Uh, you've given us all a shot on your channel and your live streams, and uh, we want to return the favor. So thanks a lot. Yep, thank you. Anyway, Elton John, big deal, six decades, 300 million records sold. Incredible. He's knighted, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Oscar for Lion King, Tony for Aida, nine number one hits. The accolades go on and on and on. So. What we're going to do today is we're going to start with uh, 15 through 11, one at a time. And then when we get down to the, the, the top 10, we'll go individually around the horn. The order will be Larry, Glenn, Randy, and myself. So, Larry, kick it off. What do you have 15 through 11 uh, for Elton? Well, I, I just want to say that the first time I heard Elton John, I think one of my brothers brought home Tumbleweed Connection. So that was probably about 1971. And so all of his albums after this, I, I either bought or heard up to, I think the last one I bought was West, was West of the... Rock, Rock of the Westies. Westies. Rock, Rock of the Westies, Westies yeah. yeah, which was kind of a disappointment in a way. But I mean, he had such a good run in the 70s. And, you know, and, and later on, he, he still had some good songs, of course, that I've heard. But my uh, bottom five from 15 to 11 are... Sacrifice, blue eyes. Glenn has got blue eyes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, Country Comfort, which I believe, yeah, it's on Tumbleweed Connection. Oh, yeah, I love that and song. I also love Rod Stewart's version of Country yeah, it's good. Man, Earl Scruggs Review version. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry seems to be the hardest word, mm. and Dan Danya. Wow, very cool. I think I have two of those in my uh, 15 through 11. Very close. What do you got, Glenn? Uh, the first one, I'm the same as Larry. I, I heard the first album first when it, not yeah. the first album. He's got an album out before yeah. the Elton John album with your song, right? Yeah. But I always consider yeah, that as first. Sky, album. Empty Sky. I, so. I never consider Empty That's Sky an Elton John album for some reason. It's like his it, first he, album's Elton John. That's the, the first one. album. Right here. Yeah. That's the one I heard when it came out. And a uh, pretty mind blowing album at the time. He was just, he was great. Like Larry said, seventies. He ruled the seventies. Like just amazing. Um my number fifteen is his salute to a TV star, Tony Danza. Hold me closer, Tony Danza. Tony, wow. Tony Dancer. Tiny Dancer. <laughs> Tiny dance. Yeah, I'd be going on that. Tony dance. I, I was thinking, yeah. I've never heard that song. A tribute yeah. to Tony Hold dance. me closer, Tony Dancer. That's a great song. <laughs> That's my number 15. Number 14, Burn Down the Mission nice. from the album Larry just held up, which is my favorite Elton John album, which was inspired by the band, probably. Yes. Yeah, the band. Yeah. 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 And number 13, Saturday Night's All Right for Fight. Classic. Number 12, Ballad of a Well-Known Gun, also nice. from Tumbleweed Connection. And number 11 is Levon. Nice. Glad to see he that. Shall, he shall be Levon. And he shall be a good man. Yes. <laughs> and he shall be the drummer for the band. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yes. <laughs> Very cool. What do you have, Randy? Well, I was just going to say, uh, Larry said how he started with Elton John. I started with this album right here. I joined the Record Club of America, which is kind of like Columbia House, where they sent you a 
a record a month or whatever. And so I had about five albums. And so I got a lot of play. So it's really going to be high on my list of songs because I played it so much when I was younger. But my number 15 is from Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, Benny and the Jets, which I still don't know what the words are on that song. It's like, and it's Benny! Electric boots. Benny! Benny and the Jets. Something about a mohair That might be a good skit for Larry to figure out some words. Benny and the Jets. But my number 14 is from Don't Shoot Me, I'm Only Piano Player, Danielle, just a lovely ballad. Yeah. I always love that song. 13 from the Elton John that you consider the his first one, <laughs> Border Song. Nice. Yeah, great song. Has a little bit of gospel influence. I guess mm-hmm. Aretha Franklin later did it. Yeah. Uh, 12 uh, from Don't Shoot Me, I'm Only Piano Player, Crocodile Rock, which... Kind of goes back to old time rock, looking back at the music that influenced him. Yeah. And 11 is from Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, Candle in the Wind, uh, the one about Marilyn Monroe. I know he did one later about Princess Diana. I think that was the, the one about before. dead blondes. Isn't that what the <laughs> Keith Richards said? <laughs> Elton John likes doing songs about dead blondes. It's a beautiful song. <laughs> it, well, it is. I, a, I, I, it I is. I think a it was song. the number one song ever in the UK. I think we talked about this was. Yeah. Was the one he did for Princess Diana, but I like the original about Marilyn yeah. Monroe. Yeah, yeah, beautiful song. Uh, cool, all good songs. I like Randy. Started with this one right here, "Madman Across the Water," and then right after that, of course, I got "Hunky Chateau," and then I went back and got "Tumbleweed Connection," which I preceded it. So then we were flying for about four or five albums. And then, like Larry said, you get up to Rock of the Westies and it just went off the cliff a little bit. So anyway, my number 15 is Take Me to the Pilot. Uh, oh, yeah. Kind of nonsensical lyrics, but a great piano playing. It has, you know, some yeah. Elton's voice is real funky and almost gospel as well. Mm-hmm. My 14 is Country Comfort, which was mentioned already. Uh, off a of tumbleweed connection, it, it's got that comforting feeling. I mean, the, the title says it all. It's like a soulful country vibe, yet comforting. Any country comforts any truck that's coming back home or whatever they say in that. Number 13 is the title track of Madman Across the Water. Uh, got Rick Wakeman on organ, too, which is an interesting... Uh, I yeah, didn't know that. Yeah, he's he's on that album. Uh, well, Elton d- dabbled in the prog scene, right? He, this is he, a proggy track, I think. This yeah. is across the water. That that title track, well produced. He auditioned as uh, for the sing for vocals for uh, King Crimson when Greg Lake left, and he uh, there was a couple other bands he was in, and that were in the, yeah. the prog world. Hmm. Uh, but that's my number 13. Number 12 is Candle in the Wind, the original on Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, the ode to Marilyn Monroe, Goodbye Norma Jean, all that stuff. It's a, it's a great song. He really, uh, Bernie Taupin does a great job on the lyrics too, I think on that song. It's beautifully written. And number 11 is Daniel from the Don't Shoot Me the Piano Player. Daniel's traveling tonight on a plane. I can see the red tail lights heading for Spain. I can see Daniel waving goodbye. Don't it look like Daniel? Must be the clouds in my eyes. Beautiful ballad. And that takes care of my 15 through 11. Now we're going to go with one each, right? One each. So it'll be the same rotation. What do you have, Larry? I was just going to ask do rock bands these days still have a seamstress? (laughs) <laughs> what, what song is that from where that's from tiny dancer, dancer. <laughs> it's a valid question do they have a seamstress? <laughs> you, you know you're rocking when you have a seamstress for your band <laughs> oh, God. It's a good right. one. Uh, my number 10 is actually not from the 70s i, I believe it's from maybe the 90s or even 2000s and it was between uh, which isn't on the list, Believe, but I chose I Want Love from Songs from the West Coast. Wow. It's, it's I just like his, his 70s stuff. Yeah. That's one I do Good. not know either. 
I, mean, yeah. I have to check that out. Very cool. Yeah, I want love. Wow. I want nice. love. Good. Good. Uh, throw something weird at us there. <laughs> Curveball from Larry. Larry's yeah. a curve. <laughs> Number 10 for me is uh, Elton's uh, very good tribute to his friend John Lennon after John died, his empty garden. I always loved that song. I thought you get a terrific tribute. I have that a little bit higher. I, I love that song too. Yeah. My number 10 is pretty good rocker by him off Caribou uh, and supposedly written about him. And he and Bernie Taupin used to get in scrapes and ditches back. <laughs> I guess that's what Bernie Taupin's girlfriend or wife at the time said about Elton. And so it became a song. <laughs> and speaking of John Lennon, supposedly John Lennon's playing tambourine on that song. Oh, cool. Oh, really? Didn't know that. Good one. Went to uh, no boogie. Yeah. Uh, by the way, that brings us back to the movie. I, I asked Glenn before we came on. He didn't see the Rocket Man movie. Have you guys know? I, I, wa I actually have it on, I think, DVD or Blu-ray. Okay. And I think Molly and I watched like half an hour of it. It's just not my thing. Yeah, it's not I'd cool. rather watch a document, a real document. Absolutely. Yeah. What do you think, Randy? You didn't see it? I didn't see it. I saw the Queen one, which was I thought it was pretty good, but yeah. uh, but I have I have I heard kind of mixed feelings about the the Rocket Man movie, so I had, I didn't see yeah. it. Yeah, I like the Queen one better. If, you know, if I'm comparing them, but you're not missing much with the, uh, the documentary would be a way to go. My number ten is Levon from Madman Across the Water. Uh, just. Great storytelling, kind of obscure lyrics. Uh, he was born a pauper to a pawn on a Christmas day when the New York Times said, God is dead and the war has begun. Alvin Tostic has a son and he shall be Levon and he shall be a good man. But, but it works. You don't know what the heck's going on, but it works in the song. I, I love Elton's vocal on that too. My number nine is from, I don't know if you guys have heard of this album before. Oh yeah. <laughs> and it is the rocker saturday night's all right for fighting classic yep he, he must play that at every show right he has to yeah yeah i mean because you can't do ballad after ballad after ballad you got to mix it up yeah and yeah that's a rocker for sure yeah glenn callaway from the basement my number nine. Oh, i can't read i was going to try and read some words because i think this is a beautiful song it's from uh tumbleweed connection and it's called love song oh yeah it's beautiful. just elton's voice with a, an acoustic guitar basically back accompaniment and just a gorgeous gorgeous song um, i love that song too. said uh, beautiful lyrics and Talking about yeah, love is the opening door love is what yeah we're what we are we are here yeah. for and yeah yeah you, do you Don't know what off I mean? More. You know what I mean? Yeah. Great song. Great tune. Mm -hmm. All right. My number nine is another one from Mad Man because I love that album. But uh, it's kind of about, it's uh, called Holiday Inn, about life on the road. Could actually, I think if Elton wanted to be, be writing country songs with Bernie. It's got kind of a country feel almost. But yeah, just. Love the Holiday Inn. Love his voice on that one. My number nine is one that was mentioned earlier, Empty Garden. The John Lennon uh, tribute, I guess. It's from a 1982 album called Jump Up. It's the only reason I bought the album because I don't like anything else on it except this song. <laughs> and he's basically remembering his friend who just died in 1980, a couple of years before the album and the song came out. And it's, he says, I've been knocking, but no one answers. I've been knocking most of the day. I've been calling, hey, hey, Johnny, can't you come out and play? Can you come out and play in your empty garden? It's a real touching song. I, I think it's fantastic. Yeah, it, it's like uh, Paul McCartney's tribute here today. When that came out in 1980, I don't know what you guys thought of it. I just thought it was a bit too, you know, like your typical sugary sweet Paul. But like, you know, through the years, I think yeah. it, it's excellent. It right. was really moving. Like, yeah. Yeah, the the years do make a difference when yeah. you first, you know, you yeah. take it in context. Yeah. My number eight is the opening track from Honky Chateau, Honky Cat. Awesome. Get back. 
Get back. Okay. Get, get on. Get on back to the woods or whatever. He's yeah. Saying. Great one. My number eight is Daniel. So I think hey. it's been mentioned a couple times. That's three times so far. Yep. Yeah. Awesome song. My number eight is another great ballad, Your Song. Oh. One, of, uh, one of his most beautiful ballads and Bernie Toppin's wonderful lyrics. But that's 1970, Your Song. Yeah, nice. Yep, great one. My number eight is Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting uh, off the Goodbye Yellow Brick Road album. Uh, the band especially sounds really in top form here with, you got these guys don't get enough credit. You got Davey Johnstone on guitar, D. Murray on bass, and Nigel Olson on drums. And they were his band for most of the 70s, I believe. Yeah. I think right up until if they're still around today, they're probably yeah, still they, his they're, band. They're fantastic musicians, all of them. Same family of people together forever and right. ever and ever. That's right. one thing you say about Elton John. It, it, it's probably uh, um, a tribute to him that, you know, people still stay with him all these years too right sure my number seven and it's funny randall that you mentioned i, I should do a video i actually i think i did do a, vi a video for benny and the jets it's uh it's when i close oh i i something's come you know it's one of those uh spiritual people or whatever so i close my oh something's coming in i have to see and i start singing benny and the jets and the stupid lyrics <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, Benny and the Jets. Uh, I think I like it more now than I did when I, when I first heard it. I, I kind of found it a bit very strange, of course, yeah, and yeah. annoying. But now, yeah, I love it. Nice. Number seven from the same album as Benny and the Jets. The title song from Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. Oh, yeah. And coincidentally, it's called Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. Beautiful song. Beautiful. The Dogs High of on. Society Howl. Yep. High up on my list. My number seven from Hockey Chateau is Rocket Man. And I think that song fit the spacey attire he was wearing yeah. on stage at the time. That's true. Yeah, my number seven is probably going to be near the top on some of your lists here. But I like six songs a little better. And that's Funeral for a Friend, Love Lies Bleeding, the uh, instrumental and the opening track of Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. It's, it's absolutely uh, epic. Is that one song or two? It's, I'm counting it as one because of the Okay, count. good. No, because I want to know that because it might, it might come up later. It's got a slash in between, so I'm considering <laughs> it one. Uh, what, a, what a great song and uh, a, a rocking vocal. Once you got that sweeping, you can almost hear the wind coming in and then the build up and... And then uh, Elton opens up and says, the roses in the window box have tilted to one side. Everything about this house was born to grow and die. Doesn't seem a year ago to this very day. I'm sorry, honey, if I don't change the pace, I can't face another day. And then he goes into Love Lies Bleeding in My Hands. It's a fantastic song. My number six is from this album. Yep. Goodbye, Yellow Brick Road. <laughs> <laughs> great one yeah just his his vocals right like yeah look he he i guess he isn't the greatest singer but his, it's his the personality he he is a good singer of course i'm, I'm just saying he's not the great one of the greats right? right but still with his personality and everything he's just amazing yeah. Yeah. one thing i want to mention about elton john is i stopped taking him seriously when he started wearing like the duck costumes and stuff yeah, like yeah. that i thought his yeah. music was so good and then i thought you're turning it into a cartoonish kind of a clowny thing and yeah after that he i he lost me so that's right. where i jump off yeah he didn't need to I, do I, all that no it was i i don't i, I question it and i, I believe yeah. that possibly drugs were involved though. yes they had yeah to be. <laughs> yeah they had to be yeah. yeah and he definitely had a seamstress <laughs> <laughs> he had yeah. seems a seamstress he and some he did a lot of seamstresses. <laughs> yeah. And he was handing yeah. tickets out for God. I mean, he did it all. <laughs> uh, where are we at? Number six. 
Yep. It's been mentioned a couple of times, but I absolutely love this track. Com Country Comforts. Mm. Just beautiful, beautiful song. Great song. Like I said, the Earl Scruggs review do an incredible version of that song. See, I don't know the Earl Scruggs. I know the Rod Stewart version, but I don't know the Earl yeah. Scruggs. Yeah, yeah. Rod does. Yeah, Rod did a great version. He did. He did. I love Rod. Well, my number six, uh, and I included it as one song too, Funeral for a Friend, Love Lies Bleeding, great instrumental at the beginning. And this is for Larry and Glenn. Is, is this a prog rock song? It is. Yeah. Yes, I would say it is. Has to be. Definitely Funeral for a Friend. Yes, that part. Yep. Yeah, so that's my number six. My number six was mentioned. It's Rocket Man from the Hunky Chateau. Uh, I like the little drug reference. I'm going to be high as a kite by then. I don't know if the, it's the rocket <laughs> thing or it's a double entendre or whatever. Uh, burning out his fuse up here alone. Rocket man. Now we're to the top five. Yep. Well, my number five is, I, I love the, the title of, <laughs> of the song, The Bitch is Back, the opening track <laughs> from Caribou. And, uh, <laughs> you know, there... I don't know if you ever saw the documentary. I think it was in the 90s where like Elton John is having these temper tantrums and everything. It's pretty funny, actually. Like, uh, <laughs> I didn't see that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, number five, the bitch is back. <laughs> I hope I'm not jumping the gun here. Maybe I should save this comment, but I want to, I'm proud of all you guys because no one has included Don't Go Breaking My Heart with Kiki D. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. No, that'll yeah, probably be number, number one. one. Yeah. We, got, we got five more songs left. <laughs> Maybe I should have saved that. <laughs> no, you won't hear yeah. it now I see all three of you guys with your pads going, oh shit, what's Rick would do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, the next one is, I think off the, what I consider Elton John's first album, 60 Years On. Oh, oh nice. Oh, they saw, especially now we're up, now we're all up there. It kind of uh, is. We're all there. Yeah. Well, my number five. I think two people have picked it already. Of Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, kind of about yearning for a simpler life, and right. uh, just just a great track. And Elton sounds wonderful on that song. Yep. Uh, my number five is your song, the beautiful love song. From 1970, uh, just what can you say? I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't. A little mind. bit funny. A little bit funny. Put down in words how wonderful. Feeling and song. Larry sings that to me when I walk over into his house. He always he always sings that. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> it's a great song. That's the first Elton John song I ever heard. Actually, in 1970, yeah. it came on the radio. Me too. Uh, that was the first one I ever heard. And then, of course, the albums came out after that and they started grabbing them up. But yeah. what an intro. Well, my number four. Yeah. Oh, oh nice. you, bring, bring it. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, you didn't. Nice job. Man. <laughs> Come on, Larry. I like it. It's a great song. Oh, it's awful. Right, Rich? Oh, I, I don't mind it. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> It's all, it's all my honorable mentions, actually, Glenn. But yeah, yeah, it's a it's it's a lighthearted. Don't good go pop breaking song. my heart. I won't go breaking your heart. Don't go breaking my heart. It's breaking your heart. Oh. Now, now this is a guy that hates Abba, so obviously he's gonna hate me. <laughs> yeah. Don't go breaking my heart. <laughs> my dog just got off the couch and ran upstairs. Hey, we had to have one ball busting uh, moment in the video. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> okay, no, we all we're all entitled to like what we like. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. thank you, Glenn. <laughs> Very noble of you, Glenn. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I'm busy on Friday. I can't. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a kick, kicky D solo well. Yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. Number four is the title song from Madman Across the Water, which is called Madman Across the Water. Love that yeah, song. Yeah, imagine that. Dun, 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 dun. I love the music. Yeah. Great lyrics. Excellent vocal performance. I can see it very well. Yeah. Oh. And, uh, you know, we, we should really give more love to Bernie Top. I mean. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Yeah. You know, Elton John is one of the few, he comes from that singer songwriter era, but yet he didn't write yeah. his new lyrics. Bernie wrote the no. lyrics. And yeah. all those other guys, you can go right down the list. They all wrote their own lyrics. So yeah, mm -hmm. Elton's kind of different that way. Yeah. And he still had an incredible career and one of the top yeah. guys of all time. But what a team, though. I mean, Bernie Taupin come team. up with these amazing lyrics and Hannah Elton yeah. and Elton comes up with these amazing arrangements. Like, I yeah. don't think Bernie probably walked in and went, hey, Elton, this is the way it should go. I, I'm pretty sure it was just like, here's a bunch of words in a book here, you know. Make this happen, yeah. And then yeah. Pro Proco Harum had a lyric writer. Yep. Uh, Keith Reed. Yep. Didn't and uh, King Dead? Crimson. King Grateful. Crimson. I think Robert Hunter for The Grateful Robert Dead. Robert Hunter, Grateful Dead, yeah. Does happen. Yeah. They're, they're probably the most famous team together. Yeah. Uh, Elton. Elton and Bernie. Yeah. Well, my number four from that Glenn mentioned from Tumbleweed Connection and maybe his most complex song, Burn Down the Mission. And it has different tempos in, within the song. And I don't really know what the song means exactly, but I always took it as when he says burn down the mission. Sometimes you have to burn down some of your beliefs if you in want order to, to kind alive. of see with new eyes. I don't know. That was my take from it. Very good. My number four is one that hasn't been mentioned. I hope uh, Glenn doesn't come after me here. <laughs> Mona Lisa's and Mad Hatter's from Hunky Chateau. I absolutely love this song. Gorgeous song. Sons of bankers, sons of lawyers. It appears in Almost Famous at a pivotal scene later in the movie. Uh which is a great movie. Anybody hasn't seen that, all timer. But Mona Lisa's and Mad Hatter's is way up number four on my list. My number three is actually th these three, the last three, they could, any of them could be number one for me. Yeah. Uh, Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me, number three. Excellent. My number three, Wait, again. To no, I was just grabbing. My, yeah, I was changing to Kiki D. Yeah. Why do I get the feeling Rich's number one is going to be Philadelphia Freedom? It's I'm not. just uh, saying. It's a great <laughs> prediction, though, but not. Yeah. Uh, Tumbleweed Connection, a very poignant song, Talking Old Soldiers. Nice. Deep cut. Yeah, yeah. deep cut. I, I just love that song. It's really uh it's sad and it's like it, it's kind of the bitterness of war these uh, you know, old soldiers talking about you know and all the dead friends they left behind and it's it's an amazing song very good well my number three from madman across the water is levon love the piano and strings and it's about a guy named levon and he's got a kid named jesus <laughs> yeah, or a, it, I bet you his name was a Zeus, but in England that's Jesus. Yeah. My <laughs> he was a baseball three, player. He'd be a Zeus. Hey Zeus, my number three is Tiny Dancer. Again, this uh, had a rejuvenated thing when Almost Famous came out. That fan, famous bus scene where they're all singing, uh, you know, "Count the Headlights on the Highway" and all that stuff. Great, great song. I love it. Tony Dancer from uh, Mad Men as well. Tony Dancer. Tony Dancer. <laughs> so my number two is a deep cut. Ooh. I bet some of you have never even heard it. It's, I think it's going to be a long, long time before the seamstress for the band arrives. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> Was Kiki D it. on that one too? <laughs> Was she, did she sing with them on that too? No, it's Rocket Man, which is... Go. Yeah. Uh, I remember having that on, on a single, when, I think when it came out, and just always yeah. loving it. Rocket Man. Yeah, it's a great song. I always equate Rocket Man and Space Oddity because they were around the same time. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're both. I was just, thinking, I was just thinking that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. My number two, Rich already mentioned, I, I was afraid that, that to, to make it as one song, but I did too. Love Lies Bleeding and uh, Funeral for a Friend. Um, Funeral for a Friend is just, what a start to that album. When we were doing our favorite opening tracks, and I think one person had that. Yeah. I can't remember who is their opening, and I wish I had had it. because a great one. It's just killer. And then when he when Nate breaks into Love Lies Bleeding, it's just, oh. What a transition. Yeah. Epic. It's, yeah. it's just 
one of the best transition pieces ever on recorded music as far as yeah. I'm concerned. Yep. Well, my number two deals with the steam stress. It's Tiny Dancer, <laughs> Tony Dan, <laughs> from Mad Man. Some of, I think it's my favorite piano from Elton John is on that song. Yeah, I love the piano it's beautiful, that yep. That's a great one. My number two, I think has been mentioned by all three of you guys. So this is a uh, quadrifecta here. It's four, four of us all had this song. Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, the title track. Where the dogs of society howl. <laughs> you know, you can't lock me in your penthouse. I'm going back to my plow, all that good stuff. Uh, great song. Love it to death. I, it, it's risen years ago. I would have had your your song probably at number two. And but I, every time I hear Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, I just think it's a fantastically written and performed song. So it's number two for me. Yeah, it's an amazing song. All right, we're down to the big enchilada. Later. Number one, drum roll. Number one for me is Philadelphia Freedom. I just drew <laughs> Actually, I had it on the list at one time because I do like them. Yeah. Uh, but number one for me, it's the very first song that John Lennon heard of Elton John's and he became a fan right away. And what else? I think it's the first song I ever heard. It's your song. Yeah, it's a great one. Yeah. First one I ever and, heard. And too. I think it's, I think I read it's Elton John's favorite of all his Is songs. It? Yeah. yeah. Really? Well, it, it could be his why. signature Beatus. song. It really could be. Yeah. I mean, when his yeah. epitaph's written, I mean, he'll be known for what? Your song and yeah. a few others, of course, but that's that's up there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Incredible song. Beautiful. It's my wife's favorite, that's for sure. Yeah. Number one. Rich, you thought I was going to tease you about this song, but I think it's it's one of my favorite songs of all time by anybody, Mona Lisa's and Manhattan. Oh, wow, good for you. Yeah. Love that song. It's a great song. I have no freaking idea what it's about. No, not really, but, well. I don't know if it's a slam on soci upper society or... Well, I, yeah. I, can't, I, I don't know. I, I, I've never been able to figure it out, but I love the lyrics and I love the song itself. And uh, just beautiful, beautiful song. The one, the one lyric in here, it says, turn around and say good morning to the night for unless they see the sky, but they can't. And that is why they know not if it's dark outside or light. So uh, these yeah. people wandering around uh, looking for something. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm not sure. It's an interesting song. Uh, and I love it in the uh, movie Almost Famous where... There's an overdose scene and very emotional part of the movie. I don't know if you've seen it, but yeah, it's a great. I'm glad you had it at number one. Great pick. This is a terrible album. Red Strikes Back. A couple songs, but he does a volume. He does a part two of Mona Lisa's and Mad Adder's part part two. Oh, I didn't know that. And I can't even remember if it's any good or not. I didn't know it either. But my number one is. I'm going breaking my heart. No, Mona Lisa's and oh, Manhattan's. Hey, good oh, job, wow. <laughs> that place and Hon Honky Chateau. And supposedly, from what I've read, it was Bernie's uh, about the characters he ran across in New York City. It was kind of okay. about the characters. That makes across. sense. Yeah. Yeah, you probably ride the subway, maybe even and see, because it seems like it's an underground, like you're, you got to go up and, you know, like say, you don't see the sky and whatever. That's, that's, no, be... that's no place for a good man to go down. To yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, that could be. Um, I, that's interesting. Yeah. Two of you guys had it at number one. I, I thought I was reaching at number four, but great job. Uh, my number one is one that nobody has had, and it's not Philadelphia Freedom. <laughs> It's off Captain Fantastic and the Brown Dirt Cowboy. Someone saved my life tonight. I had that on my list at one point. This, to me, is this is the song that really is uh, emotional. It's dark, kind of despairing. Mm -hmm. You know, there's suicide talk, and there's all kinds. And it's of, based on a true story. Too. Based on a true story, you got all kinds of uh, images in the lyrics, like strangled and slip noose and jump under the deep end of the river and all this kind of stuff. Uh, you almost had your hooks in me, did you, dear? Uh, Alder bound, hypnotized. It's based on a true story. You're a butterfly and butterflies are free to fly. Fly away, bye-bye. So it's good. It's uh, Someone Saved My Life Tonight. I'm, I'm not a big fan of that album, but I love that song. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where it's at. So. Good choice. 
Yeah, I just want to run by some songs that I had on my honorable mention that maybe nobody uh, mentioned, just to throw them out there. Uh, what are they? Well, we covered a lot of ground here. <laughs> Sorry seems to be the hardest word. Did you have that, Larry? I did, yeah. yeah. How about Amarino from the... Uh, Great song. Tumbleweed that almost made Connection. my list. Yeah, and it appears in Dog Day Afternoon, too. I always like, even though it's schmaltzier, I like that song. I guess that's why they call it the blues. Oh, yeah, I like that song. I like that song. A uh, couple of a rocker in here, Teacher, I Need You from Don't uh, Shoot Me, I'm Only the Piano Player. Uh, Island Girl, I'm not a big fan of that. I don't even know. No, I wasn't a fan of that. No. And Friends, Making Friends for the World to See, Let the People Know You Got What You Need. Not a bad song. So we, did we, you guys uh, like his uh, cover of Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds? No, nah, not me. No, it wasn't either, but it was a big hit for him. He also did Pinball Wizard, too, which is a big hit. Yeah. yeah, which, yeah, because did, no, he didn't do it in the, he didn't do it in the movie, did he? The Tommy it, movie? I think he did. Wasn't yeah. he in, in that Tommy yeah. movie? Yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he had, both of those were, were hits for him. Lucy in the Sky yeah. and uh, Pinball Wizard. And I, I, I mean, some people say they prefer the his ver version of Pinball Wizard. And I go, how can you say that? No, <laughs> no. absolutely not. Yeah, no. But you know what? There's probably a lot of people who are just top forty listeners, and that's where they know the song from. That's true too. Yeah. So, great job, guys. We covered uh, many Elton John classics here and quite a variety of tunes. I think iPad did a great job today. Thank One you. I think you got to put it up at the top. Yeah. I'm the sixth generation. I should know by now. <laughs> the first five didn't get it right. I better. That's right. Um, has anybody seen Elton live? He's I have not. I've never. I, I was going to ask seen. that. Yeah, that's a good question. Anybody? No. Yeah. No. Nope. Wow, well, that's never odd. Seen that four him. of us haven't seen him live. Yeah. Sam's going to see him soon. I think, isn't he? Sam's I think so. Tickets, yeah. I think. The young yeah. buck is going to see him before us all four geezers here. Yeah. And he's going to see somebody named Paul McCartney. And Bob Dylan. Yeah. He's got Dylan. And Bob Dylan. Yeah. Oh, Sam got McCartney tickets too? Yes. I, think I so. couldn't afford that, man. I think he did. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. I want to thank everybody for being here. Glenn Calloway from The Basement. Check his channel out. Randall Nelson. Just a, a little quick plug for Randy and I. We started a... Uh, series of 60s pop tunes number one songs where we rank the number one songs from each year from 65 to 75 uh, our first one came out today i hope you'll check that out give us some comments and feedback of course our special guest larry graves the canadian stud muffin one of the guys the bbc and we are honored to have him don't go here. breaking my heart <laughs> and larry i won't go breaking your heart either <laughs> Good job, guys. You're going to have that blasting when you come here tomorrow. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks for coming on. And uh, leave us some comments, folks. What are your favorite Elton John tunes? And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for checking us out. Take care. Thanks, uh, everyone. Right.